Welcome to the second video in this series on using Substance 3D Modeler in VR. This is an introduction to sculpting tools. We'll cover the basics of the clay, erase, smooth, and warp tools, and how to change some of the tool placement settings and behaviors. This video and the rest of this series will all be with a right-handed layout. So if you're left-handed, please open up the Preferences menu found here in desktop mode, and swap to a left-handed setup in the Spatial tab here. The left-handed layout will swap controllers and button mappings. Your tool hand will be on the left, and support hand on the right. Actions using the B and A buttons on the right controller will instead be mapped to Y and X on the left controller. The UI panel layout for the tool palette will also be swapped. Launching Modeler starts you in an empty scene and by default starts with the clay tool and a cube shape on the cursor. To add clay, press and hold the trigger button on the front of the tool hand controller. You can change the brush size by moving the tool hand thumbstick up or down. Switch to the erase tool by pressing the A button on your tool hand. Tool hand trigger to use. Press A again to switch back to clay. Remember, use the grip buttons on the side of your controller to move your scene around. And when you're first getting started, try not to scale your scene to extreme levels, as this can have an effect on the resolution that you're sculpting at. Resolution will be covered more thoroughly later in the series, but try to keep that in mind. All right, so this tool's preview sits on the cursor here. And if you want to move the cursor, hover your support hand over it and press and hold the support hand trigger to grab and move it. You can do this for any tool. To change the clay tool shape, you'll need to open up the tool palette. Press and hold the X button on the support hand. You can access other tools on the left side column here. Currently the clay tool is selected, and a race is right below. The main panel has all of the shapes and settings for the clay tool. You can switch to any shape by hovering it with the tool hand and selecting it with the trigger. The tool hand thumbstick uniformly scales your tool, but you can non-uniformly scale it with something called Quick Tune. When you press and hold the Quick Tune button, which is B on your tool hand, you can scale the shape in any direction. Release the B button to set the shape. To reset the shape back to its default, open up the tool palette and select the same shape again. There's a couple other options while the Quick Tune button is held. While holding B, if you move your support hand thumbstick left or right, you can control the taper setting if the shape allows it. If you hold your support hand trigger, then all the scaling will be done along the vertical axis of the shape only. These quick tune functions apply to most of the shape options. If you want even more options, here in the tool palette are several more shape parameters that can be changed per shape. A preview of the tool shape will hang out wherever it was when you brought up the palette, so you can see the various changes happen as you make them. This revert button here will reset all the parameters but ignores scale while pressing the shape resets all parameters and scale to default. It's helpful to highlight two shape exceptions for Quick Tune. The first is the first shape, the swept sphere. When sculpting with this, Modeler will try to smooth out the path of the brush. This is more apparent with higher resolution layers. Currently, this is the only swept shape in the primitives options, and it's limited to only uniform scaling. The next unique shape is the spline shape. It's the last shape here on the list. For this brush, holding the Quick Tune button allows you to stretch out a sweeping curve between two hands. Up and down on the support hand thumbstick will affect the middle thickness, and left or right affects the thickness at either end. With a little finesse, this brush can be very useful in laying out simple tube or muscle shapes. There are a few ways to change the behavior of the clay and erase tool. The first is single mode, found in the tool palette here. With single mode, pulling the tool hand trigger only lays down one stamp of clay at a time. If you partially hold the trigger, the movement of the cursor slows down to help your action be more precise, and the tool is used when the trigger is pulled all the way. This trigger half press only happens with single mode. Next is pressure. Notice here that the tool preview has turned white, which is now a preview of the maximum brush size. The pressure setting allows for the pressure sensitivity of the trigger button. The last two here are Lazy Stroke, which has the tool preview follow behind the cursor by a short distance, and Steady Stroke, which steadies the tool preview with all movement. Some of these can be combined together, for example, to carefully place clay more exactly. Not all of these options exist for every tool, but all tools have at least some of them. While you can sculpt quite a bit of complexity with just the clay and erase tools, it's certainly helpful to be able to soften edges and cuts. Pull up the palette, and right over here is the smooth tool. 
By default, it snaps to the surface of the clay. You can change the distance your hand is from the surface to affect the area the smooth tool covers, but you can also use the tool hand thumbstick to change size. It's a pretty common workflow to quickly jump between sculpting tools and the smooth tool, so we'll switch back to the clay tool here. If you hold your support trigger while using the clay tool, or any sculpting tool for that matter, you'll temporarily switch to the smooth tool. This lets you jump between the two pretty rapidly. If you want to change tool settings for the smooth tool, you can bring up the palette while the support trigger is held, and it will show you the options for the smooth tool. Smooth also has a couple other modes here, including restricting it to only fill or flatten. With quick swapping between clay and erase and the ability to use the smooth tool as an alt tool, this gives way to working very quickly to control the forms you make. The last tool to cover here is the warp tool. You can find it here in the tool palette. The warp tool lets you warp and stretch clay. Changing the size gives you options to make very large changes down to very small changes. And you can also change the size as you use it. By default, the intensity is set to 100, but lower values allow you to be much more subtle with your movements. Hardness determines the falloff, where 100 will affect everything within the tool preview by an equal amount, and 0 will have a falloff from the center point to the edges. You can change hardness by moving the tool hand thumbstick left and right. The default shape is the sphere, but there is also currently a cube and a pill shape to pick from. The cube shape can be useful for pushing in quick creases or pulling out quick edges. There's a subtool of warp called Elastic Warp, which can be found here. Elastic Warp has a volume preserving effect, so it allows for some squash and stretch while warping. Compressibility affects the degree to which the volume is preserved. Elastic Warp affects the entire layer that it's used on, so be aware that it's a more intense computation the bigger the layer. You can quickly switch between regular and Elastic Warp by pressing the A button on your tool hand. Between these four tools, the Smooth tool is a bit of an outlier in that it snaps to the surface, rather than hovering on your hand. This is a placement setting, which can be changed for each tool. At the bottom of the palette, here, are the placement options. Clay, Erase, and Warp are all set to freehand placement by default. This places the tool preview on the cursor of your tool hand. If you select Surface Snap, here, then the clay tool snaps to whatever surface this blue line intersects. This applies to any sculpting tool. To switch back to freehand, simply select it again from the palette. Placement can be combined with other settings such as Steady and Pressure. Using these together, for example, you can carve into a surface a little more smoothly. The third placement option is the gizmo, which lets you be a lot more granular. Gizmo placement is found here, and it places the tool preview at the center of several handles. Interaction is done using the tool hand trigger while hovering over one of these handles. You can move along an axis with the arrows, a plane with the square, or rotate with the rings. And you can snap rotate by holding the Y button on your support hand. Keeping your cursor inside of this circular preview will snap to 22 and a half and 45 degrees, while moving outside that circle snaps to 15 degree increments. Release the trigger first, otherwise it will switch back to freely rotating before you're done rotating. Clicking in the tool hand thumbstick will reset the rotation of the gizmo. Clicking it twice will reset the position to the current origin, which in this case is the layer's origin. These smaller white dots here allow for non-uniform scaling when the shape allows it, and the larger white dot in the corner allows for uniform scaling. Since the tool hand trigger is being used for interacting with the gizmo, you use the tool, in this case clay, with the support hand trigger. You can also quickly switch between the gizmo and the previously used placement setting by pressing the Y button on the support hand. 
The gizmo allows for careful use of tools and can help with very precise movements. This can be very useful for hard surface shapes. Modeler allows for a few symmetry settings while you're sculpting. Mirror symmetry can be found in the actions menu. As a reminder, hold the palette open and mm -hmm. move the tool hand thumbstick left or right to mm -hmm. access it. Mirror symmetry can be toggled via this butterfly icon here. And if you switch back mm -hmm. to the palette, it can also be found in this little shortcut bar to the side. Mm -hmm. This is only a brief mention. There's a lot more to symmetry settings, but that'll be covered more in depth later in the series. One last thing to leave you with. To undo any tool action, push the support hand thumbstick left. To redo, push it right. Undo and redo affect any tool action, but this does not include moving the gizmo without using the tool. This effect on the gizmo is currently being worked on and will change in the future. And that will wrap up part two in this series on using Modeler in VR. Next up in part three, we'll be covering the basics of scene assembly, which is moving and arranging layers and groups. This includes using the select tool, making and copying layers, and using groups.